Let brotherly love continue. Welcome, friends. That's the opening verse from Hebrews chapter 13. And it's a very short verse, just those few words. But it is a very important one and one that I'd like to spend a few minutes unpacking with you here today. Brotherly love. We think of the eastern city here in the U.S., the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, which happens to be the word that the writer to the Hebrews uses here in the Greek. In the Greek, it literally says Philadelphia. Let brotherly love continue. This is a command that God has for his people. But God is asking us to do something as a response to what he has already done for us. If you look at what leads up to this letter, uh, to chapter 13 here in this letter to the Hebrews, you'll see that God has given us a kingdom through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what Paul has just been, or rather the writer here has just been talking about in the last few verses of chapter 12. And he says, since we have received such a great kingdom, let us, and then he comes to chapter 13 here, and he says, let us continue with brotherly love. It reminds us of John's words and instruction in his first epistle where he says, we love because God first loved us. The reason that we can love is because God himself has showered his love into our lives. Otherwise, we would not be able to do that. And yet you can see that it is still challenging for us to do this. We live in a world and in a time where it seems that love is going away. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of hatred. People are unkind to one another in word and in deed. And yet the Lord's instruction to us in the midst of all of this is to be people who do not act in those sorts of ways with hatred and unkindness, but who actually love each other. Isn't that what our Lord Jesus also instructs us to do? To love each other, even when love is very difficult to do. He talks in the Gospels about how we are even to love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. This will be one of the marks of believers in Christ, that they are people who love. It doesn't mean that we're always going to agree with our enemies and agree with everything that we see going on in the world around us. Often it's the case that we don't. But God still calls us to love. Isn't that, after all, what Jesus did? He loved his enemies. He, he prayed for those who put him on the cross and, cross, and as he hung there, he, he asked God to forgive them and asked God's blessing on them. Jesus would have us do the same thing. And again, he gives us what we need to do that because he has given us his great love, a love that we see and experience above all in his death on the cross and in his resurrection from the dead. We love because he first loved us, and therefore let us be people who love one another in a brotherly sort of way, a sisterly sort of way. And doing so, let us demonstrate the love that God has for you and for me. God be glorified in that. And so we pray. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace and your mercy and your kindness, your love in our lives. Help us, Lord, having received that love to overflow with love toward our brothers and sisters, even when that is difficult. And we pray that you are honored in all of it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking time with me today. Blessings to you.